Hi guys, welcome to this video. Control Alt T. We're on a riser. So this is a video about one of the projects besides Arclix. There is Carly. There is ALCI. There is a riser. So this ISO is actually based on Arch. Again, like Arch Linux is, like ALCI is, like Carly is, we're on always on Arch Linux. But in this case, a riser is a different way of installing things. And I keep trying to explain to you guys that Arch Linux is more than the word Arch Linux. I mean, there are lots of projects inside. So ALCI, a riser, here is Carly. This is really started from scratch and we started recording maybe two or three years ago and build it up and saw all the changes over time and explained to you why you need to do this and workflows and tips and all that. So in a riser, we're gonna focus on that one. We have uh, the scripts of somebody else, Pico, right? And Arch Linux combined, combined with scripts, how do I get Arch installed? That's a riser. And the thing, why, why did I grab that from the internet? Why did I, um, t uh, well, jo sort of joint venture with Pico is that he gives us a great way to install things. And the selling points are that it's unattended. I can just pop in the USB and type two times, yes, yes, done and it is working. I go out, I uh, have a coffee, I don't know what I do, but it's unattended, I don't need to be there. It's automated, it's pre-configured, I'll, I'll, in, in the default, I'll get XFCE. But if you change a little bit, and that's the articles down here, right? you can have any of the things that's available on Arch, GNOME, Plasma, and so on. Anything is there, and in less than four minutes, you have a system, you have an operating system. And this was one of the fastest installations that has to do with my internet, the service I get stuff from, how much I install, right? But 129 seconds really is not that much. And then boom, you've got yourself an operating system. Of course, it's a better one. It's not gonna be Arconix XL with all the software. It's gonna be really, really bare. So all of that is explained here. And I'm making this video as well because Somebody asked us, is it possible to have system D boot on Arcalix, right? I said, no, that's not possible. One of the things that is possible here is on a riser. So in a riser, you start up with the Arch Linux ISO. It really is the Arch Linux ISO from archlinux.org. It can't be any clearer, plus a folder. There's a folder on there called Alice. And we run stuff from there and then we have a XFC setting or a Mate or a Plasma, you need to build it your own, right? Build your own ISO. This is the shortcut or the letters for build your own ISO. And we've called it area. We had to, had to give, had to give the, the, the project that we made them a name and there are a few videos about it. So Either you download it or you start building, it depends on your time, right? Source, SourceForge, a riser, you get this thing. I just put something online, a new one. This morning, built one, 6.30, look at the date, right? And the reason I'm making the video is the question of the user says, yes, grub is there for Arcanix, for Carly, for ALCI, can I have system D? This is it, right? This is system D if you want it you have just to make the decision to um, change it. So I am working on a riser. This is the real metal thing. And we're going to virtual machine. And maybe you've noticed already that I have CHADWM here as well. I'm kind of uh, changing all my systems to this tiling window manager. So a riser, if you download the ISO, I have of course built the ISO, but if you download the ISO, that's the one of today. You open it up, you start it, and then we make, I explain you now in this video, how you can have a system D 
and still have Arklings. Because it is all Arch Linux. Anything in DevOS, Archcraft, Garuda, they're all the same. They're all based on Arch. And all you need to have is configs and packages and maybe system D settings and stuff like that. Now, <coughs> remember, Arch Linux, when it boots up, it has these system D files. Well, let's make a longer video. So, where are we? Present working directory. That's a problem with my W is there on my keyboard and this is D, right? Not gonna work. So, load keys PE Latin one. That's gonna work. Where am I? In root. No, let's go to root root. This is root. Where am I now? In root. LS, this is it. So what we've got is two folders extra. This is an Arch Linux ISO. The first two is two from Pico. And of course I changed some things the way I like it. But it's mainly his work and just the user changing stuff. So LS is the one I want and the dev is the development so I can try out some stuff. So LS is what we need. CD Alice. Well, we were actually going to do something else first. And that's the etc ls cd systemd ls and still one more cd system ls. Where are you? There he is. So in the third column, there is pacman init service. You have to wait, and because of the tutorial, it's now finished, right? But you have to wait till pacman init service finishes. How do I know if I have a slow computer that is finished? System CTL status of pacman init service. This applies to anything Arch based, right? This needs to be finished. If pacman is not finished, is the, the pacman keyring is not initialized and it really finished, then you get errors. So this is the good look. That's important for the video. This is the good look. This means it's done, right? There are also no errors, which might be a problem, right? Because this morning there was a keyring update. Okay, so that's done, that's okay. We go back to normally you just wait a little bit and then but what is a little bit, right? So, and then everything is, is in the background, everything runs. And if you're too soon, if you're too fast, then you get an error for keyrings. So we have the ls folder there. If you want to see what's in there, you go for cd ls and ls. So what you see is one that's green, meaning it's executable. And all the sh things, if I run the start, it will just schmot or change the modus of the .sh files and make them also executable. What we're not going to change is the ls.conf, which is the configuration. This, that does not need to be, configuration files normally are not executable. But I can have a look, right? And if I do nano ls.conf, we are here for one thing, one thing only. That's the system D. So somewhere down here is the word grub and the choice, do I want grub or one, I, do I want something else? But there are lots more choices like x4, ButterFS, XFS, F2FS, RiceRFS, Line39, I am now. And then we go down, I think it's somewhere at the bottom. So these are my countries where I get my packages. First Sweden, hoping to have Osbeck. Norway, Netherlands, Belgium, France, Germany, a few of them. Because if you rely on one country, sometimes uh, not possible, like Belgium, for example, gives us an issue sometimes. So put in several countries to be sure. And we have here, uh, go on, here he is. So bootloader is set to auto, which is good, right? Auto means if you're in a newer machine and this is a virtual machine. So in a virtual machine, you can say you're an old machine, bias, and you can say you're an UFI machine. So it knows at this point in time that it needs system D. It will use system D. So 
auto is good and you'll have a system D boot all right control X so that's the configuration I decided to have XFC is still available line 151 I can have GNOME KDE XFC no exclamation mark meaning that one is going to be installed and then Malte cinnamon and so on so I'll just have XFC now all I have to do is type anywhere Alice it will find the letters and it will ask you will I get everything from the internet do you want to get the last github code in which is interesting which means you can have you can keep the ISO of six months ago and still have an up-to-date script for Alice right you have an old ISO on the fly in the environment we're now in we can say go grab the new code and say yes which is no difference of course because it's the same right but if the ISO stays put for six months and you run it again you just copy well git clone everything back in or git pull everything back in and then it's twice yes yes so it, it's not difficult Alice yes yes and off it goes and that's the thing right this is why I love it I can sit back in my chair and say okay do your job right and it's gonna get everything for me and, and install everything and it is still at Linux. you'll see in a few minutes that it's gonna be a look a feel of our Linux. it's just a matter of packages and configs and how you start doesn't really matter you can start with Endeavor OS, strip everything and make it an Arch Linux. Because it's the same playground, it's the same Lego blocks, it's the same stuff, but it's different because of configs and choices all the time, packages and all that. And that's a good thing. That was so free. And have one, have a free operating system, that's important. <laughs> but also are free to do whatever we want to our operating system. Everything everything is changeable everything is well the freedom of Linux right that's why we're here one of the reasons so that's the fun you sit back and look at the matrix like of uh, installation <laughs> and gradually you know what he's doing right the Pac-Man the make in it CPIO things that happen now and you see, oh, that's in the boot folder. Something happens to the boot folder right now. And that's the Linux kernel. And gradually, gradually, right? Not everything in one go. You learn more and more about Linux. And with 3,600 videos right now on YouTube, there is much to learn whether you're on Archcraft or Big Linux or whatever of the other Arch Linux based operating system doesn't really matter remember don't think in boxes it's all Arch Linux here is where he's going to go over all the servers and the last 25 I see is gonna take hoping that we get a fast server to download stuff and this is happening right now Linux headers So try to follow it a little bit what goes on and the blue lines is, is an, well a new phase so to speak inside the scripts from pico because that's pico's job right i just give feedback if it's not working on more like a beta tester helping him out but he's the coder and we're using his code i guess we've chosen pipewire i see there so two choices for sound pulse audio or pipe wire what do you do if you say what is he talking about arch linux pipe wire google that right arch linux pulse audio google that also arch linux sound system for example that works as well here we're at the face that we install stuff from AOR so the the paru bin that's the one we're gonna use so one of the installers another thing you can do arch linux aor installer i think that will work 
and then you'll see that there's more than Paru. There is Ye, there is Trizen, there is still, I think Aura is one, a lot more, right? But you got to have to make a choice. So rebooting, it's already installed. So the video is now 15 minutes in. I've been talking, of course, a little bit more than the, this. Well, been talking a lot, so the installation is not 15 minutes, it's faster. That's the point, and this is what the guys wanted, right? Is there a system D for Arclinx? Yes, this is it. Riser is Arclinx. <laughs> yeah, well, the way I see it, it is, right? I guess as sometimes people want, want to think in boxes, we are Manjaro and we are Archcraft and we are this and that. <sighs> I don't think in boxes, right? It's all Archlinx. So this is your system D thing. It's not gonna be nice, no graphical thing, it's black. Doesn't really matter because a few seconds later, you are where you need to be inside your operating system. All right? By the way, this was right control F full screen, so I can have 1920 and 1080. And if all that fails, you know the drill. You go to settings, you go to settings manager, you go to display. And tell them how much this has to be, right? Okay. So you may say now, Eric, this is not Arconex. No, it isn't. But it is in a few seconds. Well, take a few minutes because I need to install stuff. And that's it. So update and all that, not gonna work. Command not found. Pseudo pacman minus SYYU. I have three repos. Three. That's not much, right? So get Nemesis on a riser. This is one of the things I always suggest you do. So data, Arclix Nemesis, open in terminal, and then I say zero. That's it. Dot zero current choices. And then he wants, this is new, if you watch the older videos, do you want to install CHDWM? I'm so in love with this tiling window manager that I have the question, do you want it? Yeah, sure. So XFC is there as, as a fallback. It's all, always a good idea to have two desktops on your system. Well, not two desktops, but a desktop and a tiling window manager, right? If one fails, you can go to the other. Otherwise, it's gonna be TTY in the black screen. And then, yeah, you have to figure it out non-graphically, so to speak. So this does not work. So dragging it to the, to the side does not work. It's a setting in Arclex and not here. So on it goes and goes, it, it's gonna do its job. And the job, open a folder, so data, Arclex Nemesis. This is what I suggest you make something like this not mine copy paste fork from github github.com slash eric dubois slash nemesis see what i do all the possibilities are in here it doesn't really matter where where i am because there are personal stuff that i do if i am on arco do this if i am archman do that if i am on archcraft do that i make these installations from the other archlinx based systems my own remove this remove that add this add that that's it and that's the fun uh, playing around with other people's os and make it your own because in the end that's your goal right it's not the goal to follow a distro's choices but to make your own choices and to have the operating system you want right not that they want but that you want and that's the Arclix Nemesis that's running right now. So in here is a lot of stuff coming online here. Melt is here, Sublime Text is already there. Graphics, GIMP and Inkscape need to come. Internet, Vivaldi will come as well next to Chromium. Multimedia is VLC for me. Office, not straight away, but if I would need it, it's WPS for me. And that's it. it, there is Linux. I mean, there are choices. So choose what you want. 
remove what you don't want. One of the things I do not want is a firewall, for example. Don't want that. So I remove it each time I see it somewhere. So Flameshot is something I like. GNU is there now. Graphics, GNU. And all these things, it doesn't really matter where I am. If I'm on Rushcraft or if I'm on Big Linux, it doesn't matter. It's Arch Linux, so it will run and it will work. The only thing I need to do is make the choice to install it or to remove it. Now, shall we keep talking or pause? That's one of the questions. Maybe we can, we can do one thing. That's a super interesting thing. And that's the file system, the etc pacman pacman.conf open it up with let's see open with git ahead not a good idea sublime text set default application sublime use okay done from now on it will open it with this and let's see in Perl plain text is nice but I like it better like this so things have changed in Arch Parallel downloads five, which is okay, but I'm gonna take 20 for my system is better. But that's personal, right? How much did you pay for your internet connection? If you have a fast internet connection, you can go higher. And then we have the mirror list. So core testing is new and core and extra testing and extra and multi lip testing and multi lip check. Nemesis repo has been added and Arclinx repo has been added. And that's all as it should be. Why did I go here? I think because of this, one of the reasons. I think so. So click, save. It wants to know my password. Authenticate, done. So that's changed. Download with more parallel Why was I thinking of pacman.conf? Well, we'll check that everything was okay. So the change is there and it's executed. And the five that was there is because of the script, right? It's super simple. <laughs> I always forget to change the Arch Linux lines. And here it is. Pacman parallel downloads if needed. So Arclix we have eight by default, but the Arch guys have this default, meaning one, because it's not used. Hashtag it's not used. So there we're going to change everything from five to 20. So that means that it used to be something else in the beginning. Arch has something else as reference. Otherwise it would have been changed already. So the scripts always change. Yeah? It's always something to change. Here we have cups. So printers are installed. Scanning is installed. I mean, it really takes away all the effort of figuring out again and again what to do. This is something, no such file. We'll see doesn't really mean there's a problem or anything as long as you can boot this is because of me doing some stuff <laughs> all right and then we have sudo reboot i guess right sr is something an alias that we have so no <clears throat> we have to tell it in the arch way again the system deboot did you notice that what one second it used to be five and with the scripts I tell him no I just want one second right I've made already something nice here this is not the default this is with the scripts from get nemesis that I get this and a wallpaper is easily changed huh? so have a look at the Arclix get nemesis script this is what I have now now take one of the videos of Arclix And look 
around. I mean, this is the wallpaper from Arkelex. This is the stuff that I want on a real metal machine. I want Discord, I want Telegram, I want InSync. And they're all in the auto start, otherwise we wouldn't see them, right? So they're all booting up, which is good. Not in a virtual machine, but it's good for real metal. So here we have all the tools. I've made the decisions, and so I've riced already my system. I told them that I want to have Arc Dawn Dark. And as icons, okay, no. Uh, but normally I think in default we have this. Start the Arc, this is the default look. But we've kept the name, Ariser, right? You can call it Arconix now, eh? So <laughs> it's so simple, right? Edit application properties, mm, properties, I think. Appearance, Ariser, right? Change it to Arconix, nobody knows him. Eh? Some spaces maybe, voila. Choose another icon, also a nice little thing. If you like to design your stuff, here is the icon, just a click. Then you have to count maybe 10 seconds, depending on the speed of your system. Um, you choose this one, arch bang, right? They got another one. Choose whatever you want. So maybe a bit slower. This is what I like to install on real metal. I seem to have a lot of accessories. This I don't want, but I can just add them to the number 400 and it's gone, right? 400 is remove software. This is my selection where I say I'm happy. And you have to make your own decisions and choices And you stop the video and have a look what applications I have. All right. So this is my setup. Is now the update working? No, update is not working. Pseudo Pacman minus S, Arconix. And now they're all here. So 300 packages. You can install all of them because of the fact that we have the repos available, right? 300. One of the things. If I just go for this and then again, pseudo packing minus s arco linux root. The root file is the one that contains bash rc. It might conflict, let's see. No, it does not conflict. Otherwise you remove the conflicting files, as simple as that. But it's not on my system. It's in the etc scale system. So basically, if I want to be very prudent, eh, very uh, not overwriting things that I don't want to overwrite, you go here to scale and say, this is the bash RC. Yes, that's the one from Arclex, right? And then you say, I'm going to take this one and um, decide to overwrite it. So control C and then put it in here, control V. You see in the size already, 172 bytes, not kilobytes, and 13.8 kilobytes. So that is really nothing, maybe three, two, three, four lines, and that's it. So if you open it up, it is really the default patch RC, which is not the one I want. By the way, you can do this as well, eh? Control A, <laughs> Control C, and if it's open, right? Control A, delete, and Control V. As the same thing as the copy paste. Huh? So if you have this, it feels more and more. Let's have a look at chdwm. It feels more and more as a Arconix. But you have system D, right? And a nice logo as well. So update, does that work? It seems to work. Rip, does that work? Yes, it's there. Rip is there. And so on and so on, right? Is are this, the alias working? These are all the aliases. There's also up all. It's looking for the AOR packages now. 
all there. So anything goes, it's all here in the list, as long as the application is installed. So rate mirrors is an application and rem is its alias. So if rate mirrors is installed, voila, it works. Now control C, there's also RAM S, right? HTTPS and so on. So all of this works as long as rate mirrors is there on your machine. That's something you have to be careful for. And that's what's also covered in the Arclix Nemesis, right? I just do that there. So that's, um, that's it for me. I mean, Super X, I've made, it seems I've made a choice at some point in time to have these icons, the candy icons, but I can have the breeze blur and save that one. And actually make it a little bit bigger, would be nice, I think. I can make it a little bit bigger and the font maybe a little bit bigger. And then escape, Super X, it's gonna be this. Oh, there you are. He's opening up now. <laughs> Log out, a little bit blur over it when you go. And I've removed some things. So this is how you rise your system over and over again. Responding another guy on Telegram is, can we make a copy of my current system and have an ISO from it? I say don't. My advice is don't. Do a clean install, put your important configs somewhere. My suggestion is in the cloud and that you then copy paste it and the cloud is also GitHub and GitLab and stuff like that, right? This is the Arclix Nemesis approach. This is what I recommend people. A clean install for Mac, Windows and Linux is best. No rubbish from the old and the old and the old system, right? But just a new system completely changed again because package builds change, permissions that I give change and otherwise you stay with the old permissions and the old configs and the old rubbish i would say and um, better do a clean install and then surgically change things you can change a file but you can also change a text in a file that is my suggestion not go for let's copy paste the complete dot config and dot local and dump it again and again and again no uh, rather think and, and see what changes and decide that file, that line needs to change and then I'm happy with this configuration of Alacrity, for example. All right. So this is Arclix in my eyes. Certainly if you start installing stuff, minus remove, right? How many things do we have? We have all this from Arclix. Can I have more? Sure, <laughs> go ahead. There is more, there is so much more. And then you can say, I'm gonna grab this, that's interesting code and grab config from the i3 because I wanna have i3 as well and so on and so on. Maybe ZSH, right? Move away from bash code to ZSH, move away from ZSH and move to fish. It's all there, it's grabbable, it's installable, it's changeable and um, it's up to you to decide what you want, how you want your operating system to be. So in response, we have now a systemd boot thing in our system. And we can have a look at the CD boot and you have your extra stuff in here, CD loader LS, and this is your systemd boot. All right, enjoy. PS, the new ISOs of July have now been uh, uploaded to your system. And yes, the icons need to be changed. You know what, what to do. Alex appearance, go change it. Say icon theme, much better this one. Apply, close, quit, 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 and then open up again. And then your Thunor will look better. Cheers.